Did I tell you, you look great? No, I don't look great. You look great. You look amazing. I am fat. You are not fat. Yes. Patches of fat. You look right great. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't mean fat, fat, but I mean, you, you look great. And this woman is my personal idol right here. This is my personal idol, Linda Blair. <laughs> well, if I look great, it's because of you. I went on your diet. I don't have a diet. Yes, you do. I mean, it's in like the, the, the globe or the star. I, I don't know. You know, it's the one, the, the Medusa sex yourself slim diet. Oh, come on. You know, you eat fish for, for breakfast. You have sex for lunch and carrots for dinner. <laughs> Linda, I can't believe you went on that. <laughs> I only wrote that because they paid me a lot of money. I mean, I couldn't be on a diet like that. I mean, you have sex for lunch. I never know who I'm going to be with at lunch. I mean, do you? What if you're with, like, Geraldo? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's my stun gun. You gotta have these, you know, for the fans. Oh, yeah. But you gotta be very careful because, you know, last night I confused this with my vibrator. <laughs> Nearly killed myself. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> but they're good for business meetings, too. Oh. <laughs> I'll get one. You should. <laughs> and action. People tell me I look just like her. I get that all the time. And cut. Cut it. Great. Mark. And background action. Here we go, ready? And action. Everywhere I go, I get attention. I mean, I never would have thought of wearing my underwear on the outside. How do you say thank you for that? I just want to say right now that the director almost had, almost killed me <laughs> because he told me to do the splits on my back flip. And uh, I'm a non-dancer and I didn't know that that was uh, not possible. <laughs> so I just tried it and uh, almost killed myself. The dancers have informed me that it's different when you do something like that, so we're going to try to fix it. Or the other thing is maybe we'll just have the stunt Medusa come in and do it. <laughs> I'm like, it's very elaborate choreography. I hope we remember it. Just don't do the split. Do it the normal way yeah. and we'll and pick it up on the phone. Yeah. 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 I'm just not enough of a dancer right here, to do it that way. <laughs> but you are, Julie. You are. Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> I am a dancer. <laughs> what I think it is, this is new Jean-Paul Gaultier, right? It's kind of like Sister Patrille style, sort of. We've got lovely baby heads. Right? So I'm vague. And I don't know what these are. They're really weird. I'm very tired. Very, very macho boots. Macho. You want to look at them really quick? Major boots. Very macho. Hi, everybody. It's me, Medusa. And thanks for buying my DVD. You know, they told me when you make a DVD, you're supposed to have what they call bonus material. And I thought, oh, my God, what am I going to show people? Then I remembered all the stuff that my assistant Kiki shot on the tour. And I thought, hey, how about a personal home movie? But some of it's kind of shocking, so I hope you're ready. <laughs> oh, even though the tour was officially starting in Asia, we did a secret appearance in Long Beach, which is in California, which is a stupid name for a city because aren't all beaches long? And then I did this thing that I really love to do. I sent my assistant Kiki out into the crowd with the camera and asked her to ask people what they thought of me. That guy's hot. We love the You bet you do. 25 bucks a ticket you do. Medusa rules. Oh, that blonde so wants to be me. Yeah, Medusa rules. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> She taught me to wear my underwear in public. I want to kick her out of bed. What's he doing there? People always say I look like her. I get it all the time. Yeah, right, bitch. <laughs> Paula Abdul came to my show. Medusa rules. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Oh, and even though it was a secret, all kinds of celebrities came to my show. There's Marky Mark's limo. Oh, you know, the whole cast of Full House is in that limo. Whitney Houston, before she went insane. Oh, there's Debbie Gibson's Pinto. There's my limo. That's right. I had a special white limo. It's more expensive. But you know what? I'm having sex with the chauffeur, the driver. <laughs> there's my hand. Hi. Took a little break to wave, just so you know it's me. <laughs> 
oh, because, you know, I get really nervous, I did all my pre-show rituals, like flossing my teeth really good, like extra floss. Oh, sorry, Kiki. <laughs> Blow drying my soft spot, because, you know, mine never really closed up. And I always make sure and practice with any microphone-shaped object before the show. And I made sure and shave, because sometimes when I'm under stress, I grow a beard. Isn't that weird? I heard that Oprah does that too. Maybe it's just something about, you know, having millions and millions of dollars. I don't know. But that night, the show was fantastic. Everybody loved me. Except for this one nun who complained and said it was really offensive, and I said, Oh, I'm really sorry, sister, bite me. <laughs> she didn't like that at all. Then after a great show, it was off to Asia. We landed at the Imelda Marcos Airport, which is really cool, you know, that they named it airport after someone who collects shoes. <laughs> My fans were so super excited to see me. And, you know, I felt bad because I should have been more excited to see them, but I was overwhelmed by the smell of fish. Because, I don't know, fish is really big in Asia. The rehearsals were so good. I mean, check out my dancing right here. Unbelievable. I mean, you can tell that I've had like 12 years of dance training. Now watch this. Okay, check it out, check it out. T total recovery from falling. That is the sign of a true professional. Yeah, I am such a good dancer. But for some reason during the show, I started making all kinds of mistakes. It was so embarrassing. It was just like so pathetic. This is supposed to be a really hot, hot number. I don't know what happened. That, that's not hot. No one's turned on by that. I'm sorry. I mean, I did not know what was wrong with me. Yeah, electrocuted. I'm usually so on top of it. I didn't feel I was giving the people a good show and then I realized what was wrong. After three whole days of no sex, I was just really horny. So I tried calling my boyfriend Wallace in America, and he wouldn't come over. Okay, fine. If you won't come, well, I'm just gonna have sex with, with somebody. It'll be all your fault. I even called my ex-husband and tried to turn him on and seduce him with my acting. Why are you grabbing your crotch? Didn't work. I mean, I must have sucked a, a truckload of watermelons. Did nothing for me. I was going out of my mind. Finally. Kiki suggested a day of sightseeing somewhere in Asia. Oh, there I am with, a, with an Asian hat. That's what that is. And she uh, had me try this Asian delicacy called Kung Fu. It means duck testicles. I know they say you're supposed to try something once, but once is enough for duck testicles. I, I can still remember what it tastes like. It's like, I, I don't know, it's like rubber tire or something. I don't know. After four days without sex, I was feeling really unattractive, so I tried putting on some makeup. And you know, it's really hard. It's like coloring, like you have to stay in the lines. I have to say, it's a job that's really best left to professionals. So I kept sightseeing to keep my mind off sex. And you know, my feet were really dirty, so I, I walked in one of their sacred waterfalls. People didn't like that. I reenacted an ancient Japanese ritual called Harry Carry. <laughs> but you know, even trying to kill myself, I only had one thing on my mind. Finally, I realized it was time to break out all the stops. I was gonna use my secret weapon, dancing. Sure enough, one cute guy really noticed me. <laughs> His wife noticed me too. <laughs> and I offered to rent her husband because you know, 10 minutes would have done the trick, I think. She was not having any of it. He wants me, you can tell. I even offered myself to random tourists, you know? I, I showed them my butt. They just were not interested. I, I, I don't know what was going on. Finally, I got so desperate, I even hit on an old man who turned out to be just a lifelike statue. But I kept on dancing. So I did what every desperately horny person does. I ate a whole bag of cookies by myself. And then I realized the answer was right in front of me. Kiki. Not only was she a great assistant, but she was hot. <laughs> so my trip to Asia turned out so much better than I thought. And I have to tell you, if you can't get laid, well, just keep dancing. So thanks for buying my DVD. 
None of the proceeds of this DVD are going to go to charity. They're all going to me. <laughs> the documentary is not why I decided to write this, but it did help me get this made, documentary, I think. Uh, the reason I thought of the idea, it was a long time ago. I was actually making um, a video, and I was working with a makeup artist that had worked with her, and um, he was telling me stories about her. I decided that doing like a spinal tap version of a pop goddess, disco goddess, would be a really funny thing to do. And that's when I first thought of it. I went on MTV to promote a record I was doing called Trapped in the Body of a White Girl. And they asked me to be a guest VJ for a week because the other Julie Brown was in the hospital. So I went on and I thought, there's no way I'm going to go on and just say all these videos are cool. Like, here's the next really cool video by such and such because half the videos, I think, are really dumb, you know. So I, I thought, look, I'm just going to do this thing. I'm going to make jokes about the videos. I'm going to, you know, pretend pop stars are calling me while I'm on the air being a VJ. And I did that, and, and, and I thought MTV's either going to like it or they're going to completely hate it. But they liked it. So I, I just sort of explored the idea of, you know, making jokes about these people. Not that I don't think some of them are... Some, sometimes I make jokes about people that I actually really like. Well, it's really hard to, you know, pick which thing I like the best, you know, of writing, performing, you know, creating or song, singing. Because ultimately I like doing this the best. Make it like bigger deal. What I'm doing right now, which is that I got to write it and I got to help create it and I got to star, you know, star in it. That's the most fun, creating something that you get to actually get to be in the production. I'm just really feel very lucky that it's, I've been that I've been able to do it. People have given me money and said, "Okay, go do this weird thing." Everything has a different good thing about it, a different bad thing about it. The thing that's great about working on cable is that you have a lot of artistic freedom, right? Or these things I've created on cable. You have a lot of artistic freedom. You don't have as much money to work with, but you can do a lot of the things they want to do. They just let you do them. Mel Gibson? Um, okay. Uh, Marlon Brando? 300 pounds ago. Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Goldthwait? Uh-huh. That guy? No, definitely not. Yeah, but, he, but he's outside waiting. I don't care. No way. Hey, Medusa, how you doing? Oh, Bobcat, hi. Hi. I just wanted to tell you that I thought your show was excellent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, especially that part with the remote control. Do you know what? I do that myself at home. Uh, really? Yeah, I really do. Take that as a compliment. Well, uh, um, I don't know what to say. I just wanted to tell you that I thought your show was really neat. Neat? Yeah. Um, I'll get out of your hair. I'm sure you got a lot of Medusa things to do. <laughs> yeah. Neat. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. I saw you. You were like, Ugh. like you were going to puke when I said neat. I genuinely meant that. No, I... no, I just have a problem with my uvula. <laughs> uvula? Don't talk dirty. You know, that kind of trashy talking may work when you're up on stage and when you're in your flashy magazines. But I'm a family man. I didn't... I didn't need to come here tonight. I could have went to monster trucks, you know, had front row seats. Thank God you came. She was all over me. Hi, this is Julie Brown, and I know you're shocked to see me as a blonde, considering I've made so much fun of them. But I'm doing a new special on Showtime, and I think it's it's really funny and really shocking and will upset all your relatives. So I think you should tune in. I hope you like it. I know you will. Medusa, Dare to be Truthful, premieres Saturday, December 1st, only on Showtime. The critics are rocking at Julie Brown's performance in Medusa, Dare to be Truthful. Oh, it's so hard to be me. Julie Brown is a poisonous revelation. Extremely well done. I just wanted to tell you that I thought your show was really neat. Neat. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. I saw you. You were like, Ugh. like you were going to puke when I said neat. I generally meant that. Dare to be Truthful finds a streak of lunacy at its core. One of the funniest comedy specials of the year. Medusa, Dare to be Truthful.